Howdy, and welcome to Bamberger Ranch. My name is Roel Lopez. I'm the director of the Texas A&M Natural Resources Institute, and we're gonna continue our Leopold Live series here at Bamberger, continuing to talk about the five basic tools introduced by Aldo Leopold, the father of wildlife management. These five tools include cow, ax, plow, uh, fire, and gun. And what we hope to do in the upcoming months is show you how those tools can be applied, but with very specific projects and objectives. And so with me is Dr. April Sampson. She's the executive director of Bamberger, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about Bamberger and what we hope to cover in the series. Great, thank you so much, Roel. We're really excited to have you and your colleagues from the Natural Resources Institute back here at Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve. And we're excited about continuing our journey into Leopold Live version two. Like Roel said, we'll be uh, providing more detail and more useful information regarding the five tools that Aldo Leopold championed. Here at Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and our mission is landowner stewardship, outreach, and environmental education. So we have uh, many Central Texas school children that come visit us every year uh, for hands-on science-based environmental education lessons, and we also lead uh, showcase tours and workshops for landowners interested in practicing restoration and good land stewardship. Um, so we're very happy to be partnering with Natural Resources Institute um, and we hope that we know that you'll benefit a lot from the information that we are going to be um, talking about during this new version of Leopold Live. So let's go ahead and get started. Great. Hello there and welcome back to Bamberger Ranch Preserve where we are continuing on this wonderful partnership with the Texas A&M Natural Resources Institute on these great informative uh, uh, film series. I have the pleasure of introducing our newest member of our Bamberger Ranch Preserve team. This is Drew Nayland and he is like all of us. Uh, a jack of all trades, does a little bit of everything around here. Uh, his name tag says research coordinator. And one of the other things that Drew uh, is, is very uh, involved in is helping us with our land stewardship and our ranch management. And uh, what Drew's gonna be talking about today uh, is along the lines with that part of his job. So Drew, we're glad you're here. Welcome to the team. Thank you. And take it away. Okay. So, as you know, um, a really important part, a really key aspect of the story of Bamberger Ranch is as Mr. Bamberger restored this land, um, so the springs began to flow. Uh, so this large structure that we have here to the left is a key um, component of our spring system here, here on the ranch. Um, it, kind of a unique aspect of the ranch is that all the buildings, um, almost all the buildings, are completely run off of spring water. So that includes any residences on the ranch, um, any buildings that are used in our programming, um, all of our water sources um, are coming from, from these springs that, that came from that restoration. And the way that that spring system works is that we have uh, main springs in our hillsides there and they are they're capped off. So the way they're capped off is there's a, a concrete box around each one of our main springs. Um, a pipe is then run from that box. That, that concrete box catches the water that, that spring produces. Um, it runs down a pipe into these large cisterns here. Um, and then from these cisterns, these cisterns fill up um, and it stores our water for us and it runs downhill to the, the structures down there and the residences down, down that direction. Our springs here on the ranch um, usually produce in, in a good average rainfall year up to three gallons per minute. But as you know, this year in Texas, uh, for the past really two years in Texas, we have been experiencing a severe drought. This past summer, um, at this point in the year 2023, we've gotten about 16 inches of rain, and that's about what we got for the whole year last year too. So between this year and last year, uh, we had a combined um, total rainfall of anywhere between 30 to 34 inches. And as a result of that, our spring systems definitely slowed down this summer. 
Um, so our springs in an average rainfall year um, can pump up to three gallons per minute. Um, on those average years, you know, our, our summers are usually still a little dry. Um, it will lower down to about a gallon per minute. However, um, this year, because it was particularly dry, it slowed down to producing less than a quart per minute. So that could definitely, that definitely did affect um, how we use our water here on the ranch. Um, we had to, it, it affected some of our programming this summer. Um, and then of course, for the residents of the ranch, we had to be really careful about how we're using our water, make sure that we are putting those conservation methods um, into, into play um, when it comes to using water just to live here on the ranch. The residences here we had to um, use, uh, you definitely had to use conservation um, practices in our daily lives. Um, but one of the things we did here at the ranch, we had to actually have to supplement our, our spring water and our spring system. So we basically had to have a backup plan. There is one working well that pumps groundwater here on the ranch. However, the issue with that water that comes straight out of the well, it is extremely high in iron and sulfur and minerals. So it's not potable water. You can't drink it. Um, you can, but it'll make you really sick. Uh, so what we had to do is we had to set up a filtration system for that water that comes out of the well. Um, and now that well water is not piped directly to any of the houses or any of the structures on the ranch. So we had to get a large tank um, and fill that filtered water that came out of that well into that large tank and then haul it into these cisterns that is usually filled with spring water. Um, so basically we had to supplement our spring water with that well water. Um, in the process of that though, um, through the reverse osmosis system, we had clean drinkable water, but we also had a lot of wastewater produced. So we made sure not to um, actually waste any of that wastewater. What we would do, we would also catch that wastewater, and that was a great source for watering trees that we wanted to make sure stayed alive and um, providing water for wildlife in our supplemental watering uh, stations across the ranch. Uh, about um, the water that we were having to use from the well, having to pump the well, from the well, we were pumping about 5,000 gallons of water each week. Um, that's total water um, to keep our cisterns full enough for us to survive um, and to uh, you know use across the ranch. Um, so we were re having to rely really heavily on that um, on that supplemental water from the well during this drought. All right. So behind me here is a um, supplemental water device for our wildlife. Um, it's basically just a repurposed satellite dish um, which leads through this pipe down to a cistern and there's a hole obviously in there. Um, it catches rainwater, fills that cistern and then the cistern um, fills a small tank for wildlife. Uh, this year in this exceptional drought that we're having, um, since we didn't get much rainfall, that cistern was pretty much empty. Um, there, it was empty for most of the, most of the summer. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, when we relied heavily on our backup plan, which was our, our well, um, we produced a lot of wastewater through that filtration system. And what we would do is we would bring the wastewater up here in a tank and we would provide, put it directly into that cistern to provide water um, for wildlife so that they had something to drink as well, especially in this area of the ranch. Um, since we are kind of up on a hill here, there's not, there's really no water sources up here um, besides our supplemental water sources that we, that we give wildlife. So that acted um, as a really uh, valuable way to use uh, wastewater produced um, while we were you know, also producing water for ourselves. Um, currently, uh, we just last week finally got a little a decent rain, about three inches. Um, so this, this um, system here acted as a, a great resource to catch a lot of that rainwater um, and funnel it into the cistern to provide it directly to, um, to the wildlife in this area. Uh, so this is just one of the uh, the way the other uh, supplemental water sources that we have here on the ranch. Um, obviously this collects the rainwater and it's a really valuable way to repurpose satellite dish, um, but it's not the only way. Um, we have uh, spots on the ranch where water um, comes directly from a cistern into a, uh, a small um, ground level level tank. Um, so even when that tank fills up, it backs up into the cistern to keep that cistern full so that that water can be stored um, to fill that, that tank when, when the water, uh, when the summer does get dry as it did this summer. Um, we have what we call our Aggie roof, um, which is like just an upside down um, metal roof uh, about ground level that again catches rainwater 
flows into a small tank, which is then piped down into um, a, a larger trough that's kind of downhill in, into the ground. And that's, again, that's all gravity fed. There's no pumps involved um, or anything like that. So it's kind of self-sustaining as long as you're getting rainfall. Of course, the exception was this summer in dealing with the drought, um, we did have to pump water um, from those tanks in the back of the truck um, into these cisterns to provide water for this wildlife so that they too can, can deal with the exceptional drought that we, um, that we had this year. All right, so this area up here, um, this is our spring site. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, the whole, almost the whole ranch, almost all the structures on the ranch run off of spring water. Um, at, Back here, you can see that the, the plant life um, changes a little bit. You have um, some larger, greener Lindheimer muley. There's some ferns back there. And that is a great way to identify where there might be some, some springs or some water um, on the landscape. And so that's how these springs here were found. Um, to kind of get an insight on how our spring system works here, um, the box, the concrete box that capped off that spring is right up there. There's a pipe that runs down here to these valves here. And then this small little structure here is our overflow tank. So when the spring is pumping, uh, you know, the high uh, three gallons per minute or the regular um, during an average rainfall year of say down to like one gallon per minute, um, the spring will divert water to the um, cistern. But if that cistern is full, um, the spring water will back up and it will go into this this overflow here which makes a, um, a a great water source great supplemental water source for wildlife on the landscape this past summer since we were in that extreme drought this overflow was dry um, basically because as these springs got down to that less than a quart per minute um, they weren't filling up the cisterns so they weren't backing up and uh, filling up this this overflow uh, wildlife guzzler um, even with our you know, our supplemental, our backup plan water of the well, um, the filtered well water that we are putting into the cisterns, those cisterns were never filling up um, to that height enough to where um, this spring would back up and fill this, this uh, water source here. And actually until just recently, until the large rain that we had last week, um, this has been dry. Um, and we, after the, the few rains that we've had in the past couple weeks, we were able to stop supplementing our cistern water and our drinking water um, with that, that filtered well water. So uh, this is where we control where the spring water goes. The spring pipe, or the spring box is right uh, uphill from here. And what we've done, we're gonna show flow right here. Um, we've shut off any overflow. So there's no overflow going to this, this structure here. Um, but by turning this, we'll see what our, our spring flow, or the rate of our spring flow is right now. Cause we've let the pressure build up as it hit this pipe. But now that we've let the pressure kind of subside, this, this is about the, the flow rate of our, of our spring um, with decent rains, which we've had the past couple of weeks. Um, but again, during the summer, it was much, much slower than that, which is why we were having to supplement it with the, with the well water. Um, so if I turn this valve, then once again, the overflow will go into here, but there's also a pipe that goes down this hill into the cistern, <coughs> which provides drinking water um, for the majority of the ranch. So a little bit earlier, I talked about how this summer in particular, with this, this extensive drought that we had, we had to rely heavily on our backup plan, which was that groundwater, um, that filtered groundwater that, that we had to haul. Um, but this uh, summer, it, it kind of showed us that one backup plan is not enough. We need a plan C. Um, and what you're looking at here is in the future our plan C. Right now, this is uh, the only rainwater catchment system that we have on the branch, uh, but it was used heavily during the drought. Uh, a lot of our programs are held in the center, which relies on spring water. So a lot of those had to be moved to our research, our, our research and education center, um, which is run completely off this, the rainwater that, it, that is caught. Um, so that's how we adjust our programs to the drought. Um, but as land managers, as land stewards, uh, we realize that the rainwater catchment is a great, um, uh, a great resource to use in the future. Uh, what we learned from this drought um, is that some of our other 
uh, th there's opportunities for more of these rainwater catchment systems across the ranch and that's what we have put in plans to do is to install um, rainwater catchment on the barns uh, at, at other parts of the property and maybe some of the residences as well um, and at the very least the rain that can be caught over at the barns can be used for um, residential use so that we can rely on the spring water for our um, our programs in the future and that way we have a combination of two different sources because even though the groundwater uh, from our well worked great it got us through the drought um, again it wasn't enough to um, allow us to do our full programs um, during this drought but groundwater um, you know around here and in texas and really anywhere is a limited resource and as the hill country grows um, it's going to be to become more of a limited resource um, especially um, if you know there, there could always be a more severe drought in the future um, so to prepare for those severe droughts in the future um, we we're investing in um, in more backup plans in the rainwater catchment systems. And as a landowner in Texas, um, if you know, if you have a property, uh, maybe even a development or, or something like that, where, where you know you're going to be using resources, um, diversifying um, your water resources is, uh, is something that, that's, that we highly, highly recommend um, to deal with, deal with droughts in the future. So hopefully this discussion um, about you know drought uh, here at the Bamberger Ranch and how we dealt with drought this this past summer and in the years past um, is beneficial for you as a landowner or a land manager um, from looking at how our spring system works um, in addition to how we supplemented that spring system to deal with this drought and then also um, how we plan to invest in. Um, further water resources in the future to deal with um, the future droughts that may be more extensive than the one that we're in now. Hopefully um, this is beneficial for you. So thank you for listening to this episode of Leopold Live and um, look forward to you turning, tuning in um, in the future.